Welcome to the Picking Nerds. Today is part two of our two-part special about picking up cards. Yeah, we're talking about cards you're going to have to buy for standard rotation from War of the Spark and Core 20. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. Do you like people going over the cards to pick up from new old sets that are at an all-time low for you to play an EDH so you can save a bunch of money? That's us. If you like it, you got to subscribe to the channel. That's the rules. And besides, you want to be subscribed to this channel because our subscribers are 10% more affable. This claim I got here, the dictionary definition of affable is able to be described in words. Get your head straight. That means more Tinder matches, more Bumble matches. I'm sure Disclaimer Guy said the same thing that I'm saying. Yes, exactly what he said. Yes. Uh, so we got War of the Spark, and we got, what's the other set? Core 20. Core 20. We're going to talk about both those sets. We're going to talk about the cards that are rotating on the standard and for are at lower prices. Get them while you can. Yeah, because most of them, some of them are going to go up, and then you're going to feel bad that you didn't listen to us right now, and you're going to have to buy them later for more money. Yes. So what's the first one? Yeah, first one is Bolas's Citadel. It's six mana, lets you cast cards on top of your library for free because life is a resource. And then even even additionally, it can deal 10 to all your opponents. Yeah. Uh, Bolas's Citadel is a very strong magic card. Um, we've been talking about this card since it was spoiled. It's very good in EDH. It's just a strong magic card. That's all you can say about it because it wins games sometimes by itself. Well, it's one of our go-to win cons when we build X. Whether there's like maybe there's a, a pool of 50 of them, we go to that one reasonably often. Yeah, because I mean, if you have, if there's life gain in your deck, this card automatically gets like a boost from like, it's great to it's one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah, if 10% of your cards are free in terms of life when you cast it, this card's gonna go insane. Yeah, it's so good. And the next one, uh, a card that me and BZ slept on and didn't think was good originally, but we've, we've boosted it up our power rankings uh, for removal. Uh, Casualties of War. You can choose basically for each permanent type. You can destroy one of them, and or but you're not stuck in having to pick all of them. So if there's not an enchantment on the field, you can still cast this. Unlike the card Decimate. Yeah, we call this Good Decimate. It's a little more expensive. I haven't played it. It's probably not my cup of tea, but I think it's definitely a good card. Yeah, it's, it is a good card. Yeah, I yeah I think like I said, we slept on it originally. Didn't look at it. It was, it was like eh, this card's fine. Maybe I think it's because we hate Decimate so much. Maybe. Uh, it is it is a more expensive decimate, but when you don't have to destroy everything, the card gets a boost. I also hate Brawl, and this is very good in Brawl. Oh, it's ridiculous in Brawl. Because Brawl, as we all know, is exclusively an online 1v1 format. Yes. And exclusively. That's, yeah, that's all they ever wanted it to be. And it'll never be anything else. <laughs> Command the Dreadhorde, another card we like a lot, because it's not only a budget version of Rise of the Dark Realms, in some cases it can just be better. If you want three or four creatures specifically, then you don't care that you get them all. So I'd rather pay 6 mana and 10 life than I have to spend 9 mana on command or on rise when I just want those few things. And this one also gets the bonus of if you're in a life gain deck where you're getting tons of extra life, this gets a huge boost because now the life that is a resource that you're gaining a ton of, you can use instead of paying 3 extra mana, which are 3? Yeah, 3 extra mana, which is a lot. Yeah, and, oh, I got back my Grey Merchant, so I'll pay down to 1 life. And then I go back up to 40. These cards are very good that we're listing. There's also, like, several cards with Command the Dreadhorde that you can, creatures or enchantments or planeswalkers you can get back that say, like, the Wanderer, prevent all non-combat damage dealt to you. So Command deals the damage after they come back. So you just take zero. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. You just, they come back. Now Command's trying to deal damage to you, but the spell goes in order, so they can't deal damage to you. That's really cool. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, Wincon, another one. Uh for your decks that want to build themselves out, it's Jace, Wielder of Mystery. He's a Planeswalker that has Labman static text, and he pluses to Thought Scour, and he minuses seven to draw seven cards, and then if you would draw your deck, you instead win. I'm just now kind of processing. These cards are all insane. They're so good, and they're all like a couple of bucks. You need to get them now before they go up to like maybe $5. Yeah, this, this one's just, this one fits in certain decks. It's a little niche, but I think the decks is good in, it's great in. Uh, Tamiyo, Teller of Tales. This card's really good. It's a four mana Eternal Witness that has other texts. It's uh, static ability says you can't discard, right? They can't cause you to discard or sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. So that's, it, that's good. It is really good. And also, and the plus is you name a card and a non land card. And if you flip it off the top four, it goes in your hand. Otherwise, you put those in your graveyard. That doesn't hit that much. 
But four mana Eternal Witness is still pretty strong if you're playing like Planeswalker decks where you want to be proliferating or any other synergies. It's really good. What if you're in a graveyard deck and you want to mill? Milling four cards a turn? There's not many things that do that. Yeah, this this the, uh, this card is especially good in Muldrotha. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, Tamiya's amazing, and she's what, a dollar? She's cheap. Now, she's nothing. You could pick up like three of them because how could you can't feel bad about a $3 purchase, right? If, as long as you have the funds for it. The next one, get it right now because... This card's still, it's good in modern. It's probably got a little bit of a home in legacy, maybe not a huge one, but a little bit. Card's great, and it's going to be, continue to be good in EDH, and it will go up because Grand Abolisher is worth like 20 bucks. So if Grand Abolisher is worth 20 bucks, Teferi Time Raveler absolutely has to be worth more at some point. So the card is at 1250. That's not like this super cheap card that you can just, that you should pick up a million of. But if you want it for an EDH deck or two EDH decks, get them now because. This card stands nowhere to it to go up because, like I said, with Grand Abolisher being so expensive, it's showing that the cards that prevent interaction in EDH are just going to keep going up in price. Yeah, there's the CEDH value, and then there's even just the arms race regular EDH people who are like, oh, I want to get my dumb combo going, but I can't stop them. Well, there's like five or six cards that do it, and they've all just been going up, and Teferi will never be banned in more formats than it's banned in right now, I don't think. Maybe one more if it gets banned in modern or something, but it's not going to go below 1250. No, I don't foresee it getting banned in modern. Uh, it doesn't quite prevent. It doesn't quite do enough in modern to be banned. I don't think. But like I said, this card will be back up to twenty. With by this time next year, it will be twenty dollars. I'll say that. I could see more than that. I, it, it's it seems tough to reprint. It's a planeswalker. It's multicolored. It's Teferi specifically. It's got a static ability. It's not a standard card. Like, Where are they supposed to reprint oh, it? Oh, they will never put this card back in standard. That's, That's what I'm saying. Where are they supposed to reprint it? Uh, I mean, like a commander set. Commander Legends is Maybe. a great place for it. But they don't They don't usually... Usually, uh, they think 50 years in advance. Yeah. So if they're thinking 50 years in advance, they probably didn't put Teferi. They're, they're on Amonkhet version 4. That's what they're designing right now. It's all <laughs> the gods are back, and they're all little... Ba they all got returned to babies. <laughs> So Hazret Baby and Oketra Baby well, are going to okay, be fighting. Hazret's the one that's alive. No, but she's still a baby. They all come back to life, and then they it's also a, get turned into by babies. They turn into babies. It's a prequel. By <laughs> the new magic villain Snively Pippins. Turn them all into babies. Snively Pippins. Uh, and uh, next, what do we got? It's a time wipe. It's five mana. You return a creature you control if you want, and then you blow up all creatures. Uh, this is great in a flicker deck, because usually flicker decks are white and blue. And you, uh, you want to board wipe in almost... In most EDH decks, maybe not your super aggro decks, but most of them want at least one. So you get to play this one, and you get the advantage of saving your best thing back to your hand. Or just your commander. Even if you're not a creature deck, you have your commander out. Maybe it does something with spells like Brawl or something. You know, I'm just spitballing. But some commander that you care about having out, oh, you just save it, blow everything else up, and then you replay them immediately. Yeah, exactly. So Time Wipe is a great board wipe. Uh, this, you get, getting, getting extra value outside of the board wipe is great. Uh, well, next. I, I don't know that it'll go up money-wise too much. It's like 50 cents. There's even some full art promo that's like a dollar. So maybe I'd get that one. Buy the like crazy full art Teferi promo for like a dollar or a dollar fifty. Because I think that one might go up. I, I think the card will eventually go up. It won't stay a dollar. Oh, yeah. It won't say 50 cents. Board wipes and EDH just aren't 50 cents. Well, this one, this is the, probably the worst one on this list. You're not getting away with murder by picking up your time wipes now. But if there was ever time to pick up time wipe, it's not. Yes, exactly. Uh, next, Ugin the Virgin. Uh, this any colorless deck, any colorless deck, absolutely wants this card. Your artifact decks and your colorless decks. Slam dunk. Like uh, if you're playing one of those like uh, Doretti decks, get this de get this card right now. Ugh. He's so good. He makes all of your colorless spells cost two less. He pluses to essentially do like a pseudo draw, and he minus to destroy any colored permanent. This very versatile card does a lot. Get it now. How many Planeswalkers plus? to protect themselves and draw a card. Like, none. It's so, just, that one is just so unique. It feels so good to do it. You feel so safe. I like Ugin. Ashiok Dream Render is three mana. Your opponents can't sh uh, search their libraries. Okay, and then you can mill somebody for four. Uh, if you mill yourself, great. If you mill someone else, uh, then those four, along with every card in your opponent's graveyard, gets exiled. Yeah, no, just, this gets rid of your opponent's graveyard. It's one of the effects that there's very few effects that just exile opponent's graveyard. There's like Lantern of Insight, this Ashiok, and Leyline. That's about it for EDH, if, if we're getting rid of all of your opponent's graveyards. Not yours. If you want to keep yours, because sometimes I've had Ashiok just mill me. Yeah, mill me. Exile your stuff as a bonus. Yeah, exactly. Now, card's good. Um, this card gets a super extra bonus boost for CDH um, because tutors are everywhere in that format, obviously. It's also like a double hate piece. It's like a 
graveyard hate, and it's a random stranglehold. Who would have thought Ashiok Dream Render was a hate bear? Yeah, he's double hate bear. <laughs> Speaking of hate bears, because everyone hates it, Narset, part of Veils, is three mana. Basically just draws you two cards, but stays around at one loyalty and says, your opponents can't draw more than one card per turn. That's stupid. I have to tell you, Narset is such a good magic card. Holy crap. This card comes down, it immediately replaces itself. Already awesome. Plus, any extra draws your opponents have, they're not going to be able to get. If you're playing against a couple of opponents that might not have a lot of draw, they might just leave it alone because they don't want player three who has the uh, Sphinx's Rev in their hand that draw 50. Yeah, I, I don't... It's... Even if it was just an enchantment that said your opponents can't draw more than one card, that card almost never sees print, and it's it's ridiculous. This is a win condition with any Wheel of Fortune. You just nuke their hands down to one or zero cards. Well, well that's what I was going to say. That was the last... I was actually just going to say that was a win condition. So, if you cover that. Next, probably one of the... One of our favorite Planeswalkers is on the EDH. Not as good as the other... Technically not as good as some of the other ones that cost less mana, but has quite a powerful effect, especially when you're not playing Arms Race CEDH. Uh, Liliana Dreadhorde General... Six mana, static, whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Already just stellar. Plus to make a 2-2. Minuses for each player to uh, sacrifice two creatures and ultimate to uh, basically just win the game. Now the ultimate is my, one of my favorite parts because it's actually a Planeswalker ultimate that says the game's over right now. Stop playing. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, if you would deal damage to me, you can't. Or, oh, now my flyers are indestructible or some stupid thing. It's just like the game's over. We're done. Let's go to the next game. Yeah, essentially. Uh, close close enough to that. Uh, love this Planeswalker. She fits in a lot of different black decks. Getting the, like, uh, Midnight Reaper, Grim Horror Specs type card on a Planeswalker feels great. So six mana sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices two creatures. You sacrifice two creatures and draw two cards. What did we say? That was an eight for one? It's insane. If you don't care about the creature's sacrifice, it's just eight cards. Yeah, yeah. which you shouldn't in the decks that are playing this. This card is $16.00. It's not getting lower. It really is just chef's kiss. Yeah, it already doesn't see play anywhere, so the rotation I don't think is going to help it much. Just get one. You'll you'll thank yourself later. Oh, God, I love that card so much. And also, if you're if you're a high roller and you like high rolling, get the Liliana alternate art, which I don't personally like the art, but it's done by one of the like Final Fantasy guys. I know that, and it's very expensive. The Japanese one? I think it's like a thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. I could trade my Gaia's Cradle for it. <laughs> That's a bad trade. Narset's Reversal. Blue, blue, bounce an instant or sorcery, and then it's controller, or, and then you copy it. This has infinite uses. It's been talked about a lot. I guess I'll, I'll run through them real quick. So if a spell can't be countered, you can still bounce it. Uh, if your spell is getting countered, you can still bounce your own spell and then copy it. So now not only their, their counter spells fizzle, you get your spell anyway. Now the spell's in your hand that you have again. There's a lot of lot of awesome things to do with this card. The big spells like Expropriate, Command the Dread Horde, um, not, 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 I was thinking. Rise. Rise of the Dark Realms, yeah. Those two, Rise of the Dark Realms is basically countered forever. Yeah, spells that only have one, infe one effect or can only be cast once per game because then the game's over. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, I've won games with, uh, I won a game because I hadn't done anything all game and my, my hand was just empty and I was just sitting on a reiterate. Like, I was hope for someone to cast a big spell. They did it. Which, Narcissus Reversal would have done the same thing. It's just, like, it's funny that, like, you sometimes you can just sit there and just steal a game because you just had the copy spell. Thanks for doing all the work for me. That's, like, the plan of every video game villain where they're like, ah, oh, we don't have any of the MacGuffins. Well, <laughs> we're going to steal them all at once. Yeah, you collect the MacGuffins for us, and then we'll be at the thousand-year door. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I wasn't even thinking of that one. So the next four... We're not going to read any of them, really, but it's got Eternal Ketra, Bantu, Kefnet, and Ronas. They're all great. Most of them are great. Kef Ronas is okay. Eh, Kefnet's okay it, in, in in its own deck, because other than in its own deck, that card's just like, what does it do? They all make pretty good commanders, and then they're all fine cards. These are just mythic rares that didn't get opened a lot. I would say Bantu's probably the worst one. Bantu's pretty good. Oof. There's yeah. some weird stuff you can do with, like, Faith Reward with it. You just, like, turn your whole board into cards. Okay. And bring them all back. Sure, sure. There's um, Okay, so there's not nothing. I mean, none of these are like bad. I mean, Bronus is also could just be a win condition if you have the right board. I mean, they're they're just, all, they don't die. <laughs> yeah, they don't die. They're all fine. None of them are bad. Uh, they're all make, like he said, good commanders. There's not really much to talk about here. Consider them. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Rail, Storm Conduit. Oh, another win condition that we talk about all the time. That's a Planeswalker. That's five cents right now. Uh, so he's static. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, you get to uh, deal damage to a player, right? Or is it every opponent? I think it's each opponent. He's just each opponent. And then he scries one. He pluses to like a thousand loyalty. 
This card's amazing. And then he copies spells too by himself. He he actually minus twos to copy something. Yeah, he goes he goes off with uh, a bunch with a bunch of cards. He fits really well in the decks like uh, Kalamax, where you're copying things anyway. So he gives you an extra bonus on top of that. And then he also Rail goes infinite with certain copy spells that can copy themselves over and over again. Right, you can create infinite copy loops starting with Rail. So where you like copy a spell that can copy a spell, and then you copy that spell, and then you have infinite chain of copies. Yep. Which means infinite damage to your opponents. Yeah, which makes Rail pay it off. Usually that wouldn't matter. With Rail, you pay it off. Jeez, War of the Spark just sounds like the best commander set ever. It was. It's just like so much stuff happening. Planeswalkers are good in commander now. There's all these win conditions. There's all these holes being filled of stuff that didn't exist before. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Spark Double, which is a which is a clone, but it enters with an extra loyal. They can like, copy only things you control, and it can be a Planeswalker or a creature, and it actually enters with either an extra loyalty or a plus one, plus one counter. This one's okay. I'm not a huge fan of it because it only copies your stuff, and when I... I know clones, you usually copy your stuff because that's what the intention of the clone is. But I really like clones where you get the extra bonus of like, okay, that guy has a Blight Steel Colossus and I don't want to die this turn. Yeah, I, I would just say only play Spark Double if you're going to cheat something out. Like if you get the copy legendary creature. Can't do that normally. So if you want two legendary creatures or two of the same Planeswalker or you're doing some jank like that, then you want it. Yeah, if you want your if you want your commander twice for whatever reason. There's, there's got to be. A, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I'm sure there's a commander. There's plenty of silly commanders with static abilities that stack well. Well, I was thinking a commander that if you have two of them, it goes infinite. There's probably one like that, right? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Maybe. Evolution Sage. Landfall. Proliferate. Card's great. Uh, Sahili. Sublime Artificer. Also pretty good. Non-creature spells give you servos. And then, corner case, maybe you turn one of your tokens into, like, a giant Bladesteel Colossus or something. Yeah. Uh, This set was really good for commander, like we just said. Just get them... Get these cards when they're low because they tend to go up after rotation. They, they'll they be low at rotation and then for maybe a month or two low. And then, woo! And people are going to realize Ashiok's already hard enough to get. People are going to be like, I need two Ashioks or I need four Ashioks for my modern deck sideboard or something. Like, that, those cards are good in other formats. Yeah, Ashiok's the classic. It's hard to get because even though a bajillion were opened, there's a bajillion sitting in people's bulk. Yes, and there's just so much demand. Yes, exactly. Uh, so moving on to... Uh, C20? M20. Oh, M20. Yeah, <laughs> Core 20. BZ? That's what I did. C20 was Core 20. <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess. BZ really likes to mix up Commander and Core set. Never again. Names. <laughs> I won't ever do it again because I didn't do it for 21, right? No, you did it for 21. Oh, wow. No. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right, so unfortunate. The first one's great. Uh, we've talked about it a bunch. I'm probably not going to go into too much detail. Agent Treachery. If you're playing a Flicker deck, if you're playing a Steel It deck, get this card in your deck because... It does a lot. Right. It's going to just pay it off, pay itself off. It's banned in a bunch of stuff right now, so you have to get them now before, I don't know, maybe it gets reprinted and then it's dumb in that format. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, a Johnny Strength of the Pride. Life gain. If you're playing a life gain deck, period, get this card. It's insane. Plague Wind. If Plague Wind's if you're at, what, uh, 55 or something? Let's make very clear. It's so much better than Plague Wind because it destroys everything but Planeswalkers. Not right? Exiles. <laughs> It exiles. Maybe it's only artifacts. Maybe I think it's artifacts and creatures. Artifacts and creatures exiles all of them. That you don't control? It's so good. Yeah. Definitely. A, like, they're starting to pile up maybe enough gems that life gain is worth it. I'm gonna, maybe like five more gems and we'll have a life gain deck. Yeah, I'm thinking about building a life gain deck. That's my next deck in, my, in, in line in my head. So two months from now I'll have it. No. So much later than that. <laughs> so much later. All right. Again, not going to read many of these, but they're mythic rares that are about to go down in price. Cavalier of Thorns. Flame. Dawn. Night. And Gales. Night, nightingales. <laughs> okay. Flame and Thorns are the best ones, and the rest are maybe fringe stuff that you might want to play. I don't know. I really like Cavalier of Dawn. It's good. Oh. It's going to, you know, maybe in a model white, like, it's going to get you enough cards back. It's just, it's a remo- it's, it's a, If you care about the body, it's a, it's a nice removal spell, and it can get you something awesome back that after it dies. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like the one's really good, too. Yeah. Three white pips on a generous gift that two for ones you. Yeah. Two for one's them. I don't know. You get a two for one. Yeah. These Cavaliers, uh, I would try any of them, probably except Gale. That's the only one I'm like, eh. Yeah, maybe if there's something where you want to try to keep casting it, like you shuffle it in when it dies, I don't care to brew too much around that. Yeah, it's just not that great. Uh, Chandra, Awakened Inferno. It's another six-mana Planeswalker. We really like this one. Can't be countered. Pluses to give each of your opponents an emblem that says at the beginning of the upkeep, they take one damage. It minuses three to deal three to all non-elementals. And it minuses X to deal X to a target planeswalker or creature, and it's exiled if it would die. Yeah, it burn aways. 
something. The card's great. I love this. It maybe it's not a busted card or it's not you know overpowered or anything, but I love giving people emblems. I love stacking up two or three and then just telling them that they're going to trigger every turn. Yeah, the card is really good. Uh, I mean, it's really annoying too. On top of being good. Uh, next, Elvis Reclaimer. This guy, I really like this card. It's one green for a one-two, and if there's two or three lands in your graveyard, three, three, three lands in your graveyard, then it gets plus two, plus two. But you can pay two, tap it, sacrifice the land, and you crop rotation. It taps to crop rotation. That's the elevator pitch. The rest of it is flavor text. Well, what land would you like to get with that crop rotation, BZ? No one is a bigger fan of Field of the Dead than me. I just don't think in the entire planet for EDH, no one likes it more than me. I will basically just build any deck to have a Field of the Dead package in it. It's so good. It's free tokens. If you can use the bodies for anything, or you care about zombies, or you care about tokens, mm -hmm. or you care about landfall, this is here for you. It's amazing. I love this card so much. I'm just going to say it's the best card for Commander from the set, not close. I know that we don't agree on it. We don't really need to say that, but I will say that. I love it. Yeah, yeah, we definitely don't agree on it being as good as BZ thinks it is. I think the card's great. I think it's really good. I don't think you should build every single deck you have. Well, I think that it's feel the dead. I think the power level is ridiculous because all you have to do is build your deck around it, and then once you do it, it asks basically nothing of you. That's just where I'm coming from. I'm going to argue about it. Yeah. Uh, next, Glintor Buccaneer. It's uh, this is a, a discard guy where like when he attacks, you can discard a card and deal damage. He's, he's a strange one, but he fits in certain decks. Oh, speaking of strange, fun fact. So we know that Ixalan does not have Minotaurs because Angrath is a Minotaur and he's the only one there. And yeah. they're like, what are you? So this is from, this is a Minotaur pirate from a pirate plane that is not Ixalan. <laughs> you know that it was just from Ixalan and they didn't think about it, but that's what it has to be because we know that there's no Minotaurs in Ixalan. So there's another pirate plane, you know, right after we go to Amonkhet Babies, well, we're going to go to the pirate plane. That's all Minotaurs. He's from Angrath's home plane. Which is also a pirate plane? Which is I don't also think Angrath a is a pirate. Angrath is a pirate. He you didn't don't... come there like, oh, thank God, I accidentally plane walked to the, <laughs> the pirate plane. You don't know him. Don't judge him. He has a daughter. How many pirates have daughters? Uh, 15. How many pirates have... Okay, you know what? We're not going to go into that. But most pirates probably have biological daughters. Kethis, the hidden hand, makes legendary spells come back from your graveyard. You can finish talking about it. Uh, Kethis is... He's a good. He's a great Legends Matter card. He's a good commander. He also has some combos. Uh, weirdly enough, in like weird decks, not you're not really gonna see these ones in EDH too often. But he does have some combos. And I like that you can use stupid throwaway legendary lands to just Urborg get rid of Valeria, get rid of them from your graveyard, and then cast actual spells. I love how Urborg is a free roll if you, if legendary land is important to you. A Django Castle. There's the the whole Kamigawa ones. They're all like Shizo. They're just lands that come in untapped. They're better, better than forest, and they do stuff. Yeah. Uh, Kick Car Winds Fury. There's not much to talk about here again. He's just another commander. He's a really good commander, and if you want to play him in, in your command zone, get him soon. Yeah, nothing else. It really doesn't do anything else. One of our most viewed videos, though. Yeah, yes, it is. Uh, Scheming Symmetry uh, lets you and another person vamp tutor to put cards on top of your deck. I could see this one going up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's completely fair. If you have anything like an Ashiok to like mill them after they put it on top, completely just makes it so they didn't get anything and you did well it's on my watch list because it's a fun janky tutor so the competitive a... guys don't really care in most cases right i don't think this is a, a cdh card but then all of the people who are just looking to have fun and chill like it's a one mana tutor and it's and on top of being a one mana tutor it also has amazingly good seth mckinnon sub mckinnon art yeah the arts are good too actually so you know i keep seeming schemetry seeming schemetry on your in the back of your head seeming imagery golos tireless pilgrim Really just a commander. Or finds Field of the Dead in that awful, miserable standard format that happened. Yeah, and Yarrick, another, just the same thing. He's he's another commander. Uh, there's a lot of good commanders in the set. Get them while they're cheap in this little time period where we have them being cheap. Right, and that's everything. Yeah, uh, that's the list. Uh, I guess it, we'll just go right to it. Special yeah. shout-out to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. You guys are great. Uh, you make this channel possible, and you keep this channel rolling and making three videos a week. You help us do that because without you, this channel probably would have crashed a long time ago. Yeah, well, I don't think we could have sustained it for two years now plus, And obviously now it's going to be able to coast by itself. Uh, I will say this next this next um, plug is actually important to you if you're, if you're watching or thinking about buying these cards. Because on t you go to tcgplayer.com, link in the description. We're going to link you to every card we mentioned. Now you can go, oh, click, choose, buy, whatever you want. But if you buy any of these cards and you actually want to cash out and pay monies for them... 
that you're going to help the channel directly. We get a percentage of that. Yeah. Well, but if you if you're looking to buy anything on TCG Player, use our link. Uh, you click on it, you go through the link, and you can buy whatever you want off of that website, and we will get a kickback, and that's so helpful. And the us. only determining factor to whether we get the money or not is if our link takes you to tcgplayer.com and then wherever else. If you can't get enough of me and sometimes never be easy. Never sometimes me. Uh, then you can head over to twitch.com and use the link in the description. It'll take you to the Nitpicking Nerd streaming channel. I stream over there usually weekdays at 10. I'm so sick of Armacat. I don't think this set is good for drafting whatsoever. No. Um, besides that, besides not thinking it's good for drafting, I did go 11 and 3 today with Company Elves. That, that's that deck I was telling you about, and right? Historic. No, it's, it's, it's Elves. Oh, it's Elves Company. Yeah, okay, it's okay. Allosaurus Rider is your win con. No, that's, and, that's cool. And it's playing 12 Lords. Uh, it's super good. So I don't know. Maybe we can just do this for the tidbit. I don't know if we're going to talk about Amiket Remastered. It's not really our wheelhouse, but I kind of want to complain about it. I would love to complain. Let's just complain about it for, for, for like two minutes at the end of this the video. The video's over. If you don't care about listening to Amiket Complaints, you're good. But if you do want to listen to Amiket Complaints... We got you for two minutes. Okay. If you play Arena at all, this is a new draft set. Amiket was a good draft set. Our our Amiket was a good draft set. Amiket Remastered is a bad draft set. It's so poopy. I don't I don't know what the deal is. I, first of all, hate that they brought Thoughtseize and Historic. That's irrelevant. I don't know why they picked 14 cards, one of which is like Shatterstorm. So that's just in the set. There's... Let's talk about uh, you know, fun draft environments. There's usually like one board wipe at rare in draft sets. Maybe one at rare, one at mythic. This one has what? Bantu's Last Reckoning, Sweltering Suns, Anger of the Gods, Wrath of God, Hour of Revelation. There's Hour of Devastation, which is also Wrath. Perilous Vault is one. Do you have any more to add? Because there's more. Uh, if you want to count Rags of Riches. Okay, Rags of Riches can be... In uh, this format, in this format, effect. which is an aggro format, and there's lots of X2s, it's a board wipe. <laughs> yeah. That's... That right there is... I know there's another one. I can't think of it. For but sure. There's way too many board wipes at rare. There's way too many bomb mythics. There's way too many... All the gods. They're unkillable. There's eight different gods that are unkillable in this format. And all win the game. Well, they're they're, un, they're, they're killable with certain commons, but like only certain colors can answer them. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's not It's not a good format. It's not. I don't, I don't have fun. It's like high variance. I went 7-0 and oh with some red-black deck, and I just... I'm never going again. I'm never looking back. I'm taking taking my wins. I don't. I grind draft formats to get good at them and like get into actually keep getting better at them. I don't want to with this one. I have I, no interest. I don't feel it. Like even I, I. This was this was one of my descriptions. I said core or yeah, core or not core. Is it core twenty one? Yeah, it's M twenty one. Whatever M twenty one C twenty one. Whatever whatever. They it's not C twenty one. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Because yeah. they don't want C for commander. Okay, so. Uh, Magic 2021 is in a C for a draft set. It is totally average. It is about 10 times better than the Amicat draft set. Yeah, I don't I don't enjoy it. I mean, there's there's a bunch of different Planeswalkers. They, they're they bringing in stuff that has nothing to do with Amicat, whether and the, and the stuff they bring in is all unplayable or broken in draft. Yeah. So I'm not interested anymore, but that's just our complaints. Yeah, that's just a little complaint about that. Uh, yeah, we're the nitpicking nerds after all. I mean, come on. Yeah, we do nitpick. A lot. So. We just spent a whole video being positive. We had to get it out of our system. Yeah, we had to get. Yeah, there was too much negativity building up. We would have exploded after this. Peace out, Tribe Scout.